Greetings to everybody. And my name is Gabriel Romero, and today I'm presenting oral, uh, my oral presentation on modern linguistics. And um, the simple fact of what is the understanding of this. And uh, I will begin with using um, hearing uh, the New Testament strategies for interpretation by Joel Green on page 189. To understand first the uh, synthesis of linguistics itself, uh, of the phenomenon or the formation and the clauses and the language that is spoken, you, you, there's a couple of different units that are used to describe these. Uh, for instance, you have phonology, that is the study of the individual sounds of language, of a language, how they are generated and how they contribute to meaning. Then you also have morphology, it's a study of the word formation. Uh, syntax, the ways words are combined into clauses or sentences. And then you have structure analysis, which is the logical and argumentative relations of propositions embedded in a sentence paragraph. And you also have discourse analysis, how whole text and context structures meaning. Um, simple fact, or, or the simplicity of this is how the study of the language, how the study of uh, the words, how the study of the etymology of the words, and how the study of putting the words together uh, emphasizes and gives us the understanding of what linguistics are. It's just the language and the formation of words or sentences and how they came to be, and then studying the language and they were first written and then interpreting them into the modern times. Now, modern linguistics is a whole different branch of just linguistics itself. Um, in modern linguistics, we find uh, three cardinal principles of that we use that are used in discipline and are the ways that modern linguistics modern linguistics is signified by one is the structurally arbitrary and so purely conventional nature of the word to meaning relationship is what Joel Green writes in his book of hearing uh, in his book of hearing the New Testament hearing the New Testament in page 191 but he also states the primary need for synchronic rather than etym etymological is a study of language systems and then you have the third principle which is the significance of structure for meaning three different principles with three different meanings and three different things that these three different principles emphasize on the first principle is the relationship of word and meaning <clears throat> and I would state, according to what Green writes, and in first principle, an example would be John chapter 3, verse 3. And I would state it to you, and it says, Jesus answered and said unto him. And this is a story where Jesus speaks unto Nicodemus. And he states unto him, verily, verily. Now, the word verily, verily has a great, very great meaning because there's two words. There's a word added, a suffix to it that makes it more, gives it a more emphasization. It gives it a more, uh, uh, an extra push of saying, hey, what I'm about to tell you is very important. It's not just saying very, very, but it's saying verily, verily. As to say what I'm about to tell you. You need to pay attention to it because it can change your life. It can change your direction. It can change your purpose. Verily, verily. It's stating with so much emphasis. The suffix added unto the word very. Because very already has the significance of pushing it into under, of, of saying, hey, this is important. But now it's saying this is very, very important. Pay attention to this because it can change your life. Is what Christ is trying to tell Nicodemus in this verse. And I would say that is an example of the relationship of word and meaning. You also have the synchronic study of language, <coughs> which is the second principle of modern linguistics, of, of, the, of what modern linguistics goes by, 
or is emphasized or the way it is uh, pronounced, uh, not pronounced, but the way it is um, shaped into a modern linguistics uh, understanding and formation. Um, I will use on page 193 in the book of Hearing of the New Testament by Joel Green. And he states, and I quote, And one is more likely to be confused and helped by being told that nice originally meant simple or ignorant. The meanings of words change through time, close quote. And in this book, it simply says that in those times, the word nice meant ignorant. Nowadays, we understand it by kindness or or so forth, something um, nice person or he was a kind person. He was a calm person. He was a nice person. But in those times, it would signify somebody ignorant. And that is a whole different meaning to nowadays. That is the second principle of modern language, the synchronic study of language. What the words meant in that time to what the words mean in this time. Because if we don't interpret right, if we don't get the right understanding of the word that time, we can misinterpret what the text means in this time by a great dividend. And then you have the third principle of modern linguistics, which is the structure of and meaning. Structure and meaning. That has a lot to do with it. Uh, we find in also in Hearing of the New Testament by Joel Green, we find that uh, De Saucer uh, finds in this uh, at and it states simply, it says at one level, it's in, and I quote it out of the book, and it says at one level we all appreciate the significance of structure and language for meaning. A structureless string of words, for example, he states, question or be to that be to the not is. That is an unstructured sentence or formation of words has no meaning or very little meaning we don't get much of what that is stating but if we put it into a structural formation and give it and, and it gives us meaning we can say uh, restructured if you restructure those words according to we may discover on Hamlet's to be or not to be that is the question the words now make sense because they take their places in a recognizable structured pattern. The words now structured in the right format, put in the right sentence and synthesis, gives us the understanding of what the sentence is. That is the structure and meaning. Put those words together and now you understand what you're talking about. You scramble them up, you don't know what you're talking about. You might have a little very meaning, but you don't have a true structural meaning of what you're writing <coughs> or of what was written and you are reading now, you won't understand. So the three principles are the relationship of word and meaning, the synchronic study of language, and the structure and meaning are the three, three principles that are mainly used to understand modern linguistics. Now, I will apply it and I will use... A little bit of what uh, we've understood to what the words mean in the times of the New Testament and in the times of our modern day life. And the verses in chapter 21, and I'm using the King James Version, in chapter 21, verses 15 and on, it is the story of where Jesus Christ asked Peter three times if he loves him. Now, here's something very interesting. If we we got to take a real close look at this because it's very interesting what we're about to see. Um, and I will I will read it out, and then we will meditate on it. John twenty one fifteen states: So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And then it says, he said unto him, ye Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs. The first time Christ asked Simon Peter, if he loveth, he uses the word in the, in the Greek 
contextual word, he uses agape. Agape. And I will give you understanding of that in a minute. But when Peter answers him back, and he says, you know is that I love. He uses a phileo love. Two different meanings in the Greek. Two different definitions. In our modern day English, the word love for us is one main understanding. Just love is an abundance of love and <coughs> a never ending love. But in the Greek terminology, you find that agape and phileo are, are two whole different loves. According to Vine's Complete Expository Dictionary, on page 382, we find something very interesting. And that, let me read. And it says, in response, in respect of agape used of God, it expresses the deep and constant love and interest, interest of a perfect being of a uh, inter, uh, constant love and interest of a perfect being towards entirely unworthy objects producing and fostering a, a revengeful reverential love in them towards the giver and a practical love towards those who are partakers of the same and desire to help others to seek the giver saying that the love that, that the word agape, well, Christ is asking uh, Simon Peter, the, uh, the agape love, thou lovest me. He's saying, do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me with the love that I love you? But Peter answers him with the phileo love. A phileo love is a tender affection. Meaning, he's not telling him I, li I love you. He's saying kind of like, I like you, Jesus. He's not telling him I love you. And he asked him again a second time, Christ asked him, do you agape me? And again, Simon Peter answers, I feel you. He's like, I like you. But he doesn't say, I love you. Two whole different meanings. <coughs> but the third time, Jesus asks Peter, do you feel me? Do you like me? And Peter understood what he was asking him because it says that, that Peter, it says on verse... Uh, 17, this says that Peter was grieved, which means he was distressed or he was saddened in the way that Jesus Christ asked him if he loved him. He asked him, do you feel him? And once again, Peter answers him with a, I feel you. You know that I feel you. It would be inappropriate for me to say that Christ phileos us. Because that is not the way Christ loves us. Christ agapes us. He loves us with a with love that never ends. An unconditional love. And sometimes we tend to think, and when we read the verse in English, in our modern translation, we think love, love, love. Well, yeah, he loves him, he loves him. But when you read the the correct linguistics of this word, the correct interpretation of what uh, how Christ spoke it and how um, Peter spoke it, you understand two whole different definitions. But to understand the Christ, Peter loved him, and as he answered, he said, I feel like you, I like you, God. I have a tender uh, affection for you. But he didn't say, I love you. But Christ says, I love you. Because there is no greater... Uh, uh, sign of love than to someone gives their life for someone and that is what christ did for peter for the rest of the disciples and for us he agapes us so in my presentation i present this to the class and to our teacher dr brickley this is my presentation of modern linguistics of the difference of the method that it was written in the old testament i mean in those times to the method that is now and the understanding of the word love, that Christ agapes us, not phileos us. It would be inappropriate to state it in that form. And I hope I fulfilled the requirements, and I ask that God bless every one of you in Jesus' name. God bless everybody. Blessings.